What are the best and worst Pokemon of every single type in Gen 3 OU? Let's find out. We're going to be looking at this in the framing of how good the Pokemon is in the OU metagame, but when we're evaluating the worst Pokemon of a type, we will factor in the lower tiers too. A truly terrible Pokemon not only has no use in OU, but also has no use in the lower tiers. We're also only going to be talking about fully evolved Pokemon, because obviously, like, Caterpie is a terrible Pokemon, but that's not really fair. Caterpie's not even at its full form yet, so we're going to evaluate them by their fully evolved versions, their prime selves. First up, we have normal type, and who's the best normal type in OU? It is Blissey, without a doubt. Snorlax is another OU ranked normal type, and it's great in its own right, as a power bulky physical attack and win condition as well as special wall but the rift between Blissey and Snorlax is quite large. Blissey is a top tier Pokemon in Gen 3. It is the premier special wall in the format. It has incredible bulk, incredible utility, incredible move set. But who's the worst normal type? I've thought about this one and I think I would have to go with Spinder. Spinder is the worst normal type in the entire game if it will wall everything. There are some pretty bad normal type options. If we go down to the depths of ZU, we can take a look. We have such options as Apom. Apom is here, cast form. Ditto, who sucks in gen three because it has to click transform. Porygon normal, but he's not even fully evolved. Spinda is a single stage evolution and it is not only horrendous in OU, it has very little to offer. It has 60 base stats across the board, which is horrendous. It doesn't have much of anything. Its signature move, Dizzy Punch, is not very useful for anybody. These are its best tools right here. It has Carmine and Baton Pass. It has Substitute Focus Punch. But I mean, when at single stage evolution is getting outclassed by such fellows as Paragon 2 and even Doduo, I think there is a big problem. Spinda can't even hold its own against a baby version of Dodrio. That is a horrendous Pokemon. And I apologize to Spinda Fanatic for what I've said here. Up next is the fire type. We've got two OU ranked fire types, and I think that the best one has got to be Moltres. It's fairly close between Moltres and Charizard, and Charizard can be better on some teams. It's faster. It has options that Moltres doesn't, like beat up and focus punch, but Moltres is the more consistent, commonly seen, and generally superior fire type. Fire flying is a fantastic type combo in Gen 3. No stealth rock to worry about. This can come in against Metagross and check it pretty well while applying offensive pressure, which is very nice. Its special attack is enormous, 125. It's also sturdy. If you look at Charizard, the defenses aren't really there, pretty lacking in that department. Even a Meteor Mash from Choice Bear Metagross can really challenge you. Sometimes it does like 40 something. Moltres has much better bulk with base 90. Moltres also has some excellent move pool options. A simple flamethrower is great stab, but you even have overheat, one of the few high power wall breaking moves in Gen 3. Really good to have access to that. Will-O-Wisp is just incredible. Very rare option that you don't see too often. And Moltres is great with this because you can really punish Snorlax if that's their special wall. Moltres is excellent. There's no doubt this is the best fire type in Gen 3 OU. And this is interesting because when you go down into the depths of the fire type, you see honestly a lot of decent Pokemon like Camerupt seems terrible, but it has the niche of being able to switch in on electric types in Gengar and apply some offensive pressure. It has explosion. Magmar is pretty bad, but I can't call it the worst. Magmar has flame body and like mixed coverage and stuff. It's got a decent speed tier. You could maybe make a Magmar team. Ninetales is bad, but Ninetales has hypnosis and like pretty good speed and stuff. Rapidash even has flash fire. Like I would rarely use Rapidash, but it's got flash fire. I think it has Baton Pass too and pretty good attack. Flareon, you can use it as like a special wall on some niche teams. And down in PU, even Makago I've used on stream. It's got flame body, fire rockets, and immune to sand. It's got like overheat self-destruct. It's like horrendous, but honestly, folks, I might give the worst fire type in the game title. It doesn't even add up with the, the rankings here, but I might give it to Torkoal, honestly. If you don't know, Torkoal does not have rapid spin in Gen 3, so its utility is limited. The best thing about Torkoal is its massive defense stat, but its ability is useless. White smoke, its eruption. How are you supposed to use that when you have like one speed stat? This is kind of a flawed Pokemon design that doesn't really work properly. It's a mono fire type with full defense. Uh, you would never really use this in OU in any context, whereas Makago, you might. if you You might be insane for it, but I would rather use Makago, to be honest. It does have explosion, that's something, but uh, it doesn't hit that hard. Torkoal doesn't really have any distinct traits that make it very good. Flareon is superior if you want like a bulky support fire type it has flash fire it has like wish protect and stuff this has no good utility no good much of anything i guess if you want to be technical like in nu i guess they use this guy as a wall but i'm more impressed with with makago who stands out more it's got flame body and rock typing 
It's also got defense. I mean, both of them are falling to a slight breeze in terms of water type attacks anyway. I think I would rather use Makago than Torkoal. That's a weird one. Maybe, maybe Makago takes it, but I respect Makago a little bit more personally. Now we're onto the water type. And as you can see, we've got quite a few OU ranked water types. Historically, one of the best types. You're going to have many OU ranked water types in every gen. But as for the best one, we've got a few options here. I mean, Suicune's fantastic. Stamia, Melodic, Gyarados. They're all very good. But it's got to be Swamp. Swampert is the best physically defensive Pokemon in the format, pretty much. Water Ground is an outstanding type combination with only one weakness to grass. Sand immunity helps a lot. You can get huge amounts out of Chip Heal and Protect with leftovers. Sand immunity also allows you to use Endeavor Salak Berry set and go in a more aggressive direction. Swamp it improves like 10 matchups. It's good against basically every common physical attacker there is besides maybe Heracross. And helping in like 10 matchups, it's a no-brainer to put this guy on most teams. Most teams will. And on top of that, the moveset variety, you got like Focus Punch to Punish Blissey, Curse, Refresh, the amount of utility, the amount of options, Toxic. Folks, Swampert is of course excellent, of course fantastic. But now let's venture into the water type depths. I mean, what do we got in terms of worst water type? Honestly, water types tend to be decent. We've got such options as Dugong. I mean, this has Encore, Thick Fat, Thief, I think. That, that's, that's options. Octillery has Suction Cups. You can build around that. It can't be roared out. That's good. Huntail. It's got Swift Swim, folks. That's decent. Relicanth is pretty bad, but probably not the worst. There's probably worse than Relicant. Wailord is just straight up excellent. Best Pokemon ever built. Uh, Kingler has knockoff, high attack, high defense, pretty good stats. You could build a Kingler team. Chinchou's not evolved, that doesn't count. We're not gonna count Celio. Corsola, even Cors Corsola, folks, has Recover, Explosion. It's got Natural Cure on it. Uh, it's got Sand Immunity too. That's not horrendous. So we're gonna go down into the ZU depths. Clam Pearl, I guess, technically doesn't count, even though it is a uh, not fully evolved guy that has some decent value because of its exclusive Deep Sea Tooth item. But even that I wouldn't call the worst in the game. Love Disc, I will say, is a contender. I don't know what the hell Love Disc can do for anybody. Love Disc is outclassed by Sea King. It's even outclassed by Horsey. It's a single stage, isn't it, in, in this generation? Probably, I think in future generations too, perhaps. I'm, my Pokemon knowledge gap is showing. We're going to give the title to Love Disc for worst water type. It does have Swift Swim, but it is outclassed by pre-evolutions with the same ability such as Horsey and Sea King. Well, if you're outclassed by Horsey, I mean, that is horrendous. What does this even have? It's got like nothing, folks. It doesn't even have... Well, it has Ice Beam, but it's got no special attack to use it. This has got to be the worst one. This has very little to offer that's anything unique. I don't even think that you would use this Pokemon in ZU. Grass type is next, and folks, this one's not even close. It is definitely Celebi. You'll notice that Breloom is also a... Are you ranked grass type? Breloom is good. It has Spore, which is one of the best moves. It's a great momentum generator. It has a monstrous attack stat. It's a threat, but Celebi is a central Gen 3 Pokemon and an excellent one at that. This is one of the kings of variety. You got to look at all these sets, folks. Calm Mind, Utility, Offensive, Leech Seed, 3 Attack, Swords Dance, Defensive, Calm Mind. And this is just Smogon's recommended sets. You can make things up. You can go like Swords Dance, HP Bug, Ancient Power. You can go crazy with Celebi. It's very customizable. It is very versatile. It can fit on many different archetypes. It can fit on physical offense teams, TSS teams with the Leech Seed 3 attack set, which applies a lot of offensive pressure. You can mold Celebi in any way you want because of its base 100 stats in everything, allowing it to fill basically any role ever. Natural Cure is also great. Grass Psychic typing does do a lot of favors too. It helps against Swampert. That always gives Celebi defensive value. It also helps against Zapdos and Jolteon. It is kind of the second most popular special wall just because it's typing handles a lot of the common special attackers in the format or the most common ones. Even though it has ice weakness, you can often manage that with your natural bulk and uh, options like Giga Drain or Leech Seed, which pressures those water types that commonly carry ice beam. Celebi is a staple. It's excellent. It is by far the best grass type in OU. Now let's take a journey into the depths of the grass type. Meganium, uh, probably not even the worst in Gen 3. It's famously a bad starter, but it's UU ranked. It's got like Sword Dance synthesis and stuff. That's a Pokemon. There's worse. There's got to be worse than Meganium. Vileplume has Aromatherapy, Sleep Powder, Leech Seed, Chlorophyll. Those are options. There's worse than Vileplume. Let's head further beyond. Balossum. I used Balossum on stream and it won a battle. It can't be, there's got to be worse than Balos. It's also got Sleep Powder Sunny Day. It's outclassed, of course, by Executor and stuff. But in NU, I'm sure this is a 
great threat. Roselia is literally ranked on the, the viability rankings. Uh, considered to be a metagame staple at this point. Just kidding, but it's got a niche. There's worse. Oh, like, Tropius could be the could be the one actually. We're gonna go further down, but Tropius is terrible. What do we got? Lilip. That's not even evolved. Parasect. I think Parasect is better than Tropius. It's got Spore and Stun Spore and stuff. So having access to Spore makes it better. Even Sunflora. I would rather use than Tropius, to be honest. In the OU context, I guess. Uh, not super knowledgeable about these the lower tier metas and what Tropius accomplishes there. But just from an OU framework, Tropius is the worst grass type. And this is such a shame, isn't it? Because Tropius is a beautiful design. It looks fantastic. It uh, looks powerful and intimidating. But why did they make it so crap? The stats don't line up with how it looks. These stats are terrible. This looks like Beedrill stats, not Tropius big tree fellow with bananas on him that can fly. Beautiful creature design, one of the best ever, I would argue. But what does it do? It's sunny day chlorophyll, but it has no special attack. It also has no attack. They sort of didn't think this one through. It's got sub leech seed, but so does every grass type on the planet. I, I would rather Sunflora do this, to be honest. As an offensive threat, it is big nothing. It's got whirlwind, but to, you know, to what end? I gotta give the title to Tropius. Flawed design. Disappointing gameplay design too. A letdown for such a good looking Pokemon that is fails to function in competitive context or even in game. I think that the advantage using this guy in game is it has HMs, if I recall correctly. It can use strength and fly. But in terms of doing much else outside of that, I don't know about Tropius. Electric type is next. And folks, this one is also not even close. You'll notice there's three electric types. We've got Jolteon and Magneton and Zapdos ranked in OU. Uh, Magneton is a archetypical Pokemon that defines many different styles for its ability to trap and eliminate Skarmory and Foratress. Jolteon is one of the speediest Pokemon ever with 130 solid special attack too and great utility with Volt Absorb providing defensive value to teams, Baton Pass, Pivoting, Sub Pass, it's got Thunder Wave, it's got Roar, but there is a significant rift between Zapdos and anything else. Electric in Gen 3, it is by far the best. It has that coveted electric flying typing, which is simply excellent. Uh, nullifying ground weakness, providing spike immunity. It has a monstrous special attack of 125. Base 100 speed tier, excellent natural bulk. Zapdos is insanely versatile. It can run straight up modest special attacking wall breaking sets. But you can mix and match various utilities. Some of them run Toxic Protect to pressure Blissey, Roar for phasing, plus Spikes Pressure, Thunder Wave for crippling, Baton Pass for pivoting. Mixed options, you can go Drill, Peck, Zapdos, Hidden Power, Fighting, Zapdos, uh, Rest, Defensive, Zapdos, with Sleep Talk sometimes is used, Roar. Excellent set in its own right. Zapdos is not only the best Electric type, it's a contender for, it's probably an S rank Pokemon in general. Zapdos is a tremendous. And now it's time to venture into hell. Who's the worst? Ampharos is quite bad, but you can't say it's the worst. It's got sub punch. It can hit Blissey. You can maybe build an Ampharos team in a, in the perfect world. Electabuzz, it's got cross chop, mixed attacking, static, 105 base speed is good. Electrode has enormous speed and explosion and utility and stuff. Lantern can check Starmie and it's got Volt Absorb, coverage, good health stat. Manectric is quite bad. But there's got to be worse. 105 base speed, 100 special, 5 special attack. That's decent. Raichu has utility. Raichu has like Encore and it's got Focus Punch too. Plusle is quite bad. Could it be Plusle and Mine? And even these have like Thunder Wave, Encore, Baton Pass. They got good move pulls. Pikachu, even though it's not fully evolved, this cannot be the worst electric type. It's got Light Ball. That's a move. Jeez. Actually, the ZU ones are all not fully evolved as well. Elekid, Magnemite. So we might actually, it might be Plusle or Minin. Who's worse between Plusle and Minin? I think it's probably Plusle because Minin has 85 special defense, which lets you take electric hits and resists them. But Plusle, on the other, has not got that. Strangely, Plusle and Minin are in different tiers. What's up with that? They can't be that different. Why is Plusle in NU, but Minin is in PU? Is Minin much worse? It seems better to me, in fact. I suppose based on the, the rank here i'm gonna select mine i mean this has like thunder wave encore i used it on stream and i won with it that was a miracle maybe it is quite horrendous okay mine is pretty crap i think that we can probably say mine and is no no good even this set it doesn't do very much it doesn't hit hard at all dies to a slight breeze yeah let's go with mine as worst electric type i would stand by that it's a funny fellow it exists to promote the new concept at the time of doubles battles with its minus ability 
which synergizes, of course, with Plusle, the counterpart. However, in a singles competitive context, Minen has a low amount to offer. Best Ice type is an interesting one. As you can see, only Cloyster is ranked in OU as an Ice type, but I don't even think I would call Cloyster the best right now. It might be close between Cloyster and Red Ice, but me personally, I'm actually going to make a statement here. This one is pretty close. Cloyster is good, relatively speaking. It's got high defense stats, spike surf, rapid spin explosion. It's a good aggressive spike setter that can hold its own against fellows such as Swampert and physical attackers. Stab Ice Beam comes in handy as well but i feel like cloister has fallen off in recent times it's not a very desirable spiker compared to fellows of course like skarmory foratress and even glalie and smeagol have been rising up i think i might put cloister above glalie but smeagol i would prefer as a spiker on most offensively oriented spikes teams these days so for this one i'm gonna go with red Jace as best ice type i quite like red Jace. it is a pretty excellent special wall i mean look at that special defense stat but it's a more offensively oriented special wall than something like blissey it has access to explosion to go out with a bang it has ice beam which is has stab on it off the back of a pretty solid 100 base special attack stats thunder wave can cripple fellows and then you can go with thunderbolts ice beam and Thunderbolt is perfect coverage almost. Red Jice is a great special wall that can generate momentum for you. Whereas Blissey, on the other hand, can flounder a bit in terms of being passive and you can take advantage of Blissey more. Red Jice, when it comes in, it's scary. It can hit you with big moves that do damage. Blissey can't do that as effectively. Uh, Snorlax is the other competitor for Red Jice, but Red Jice is more on the special attacking side and it requires less support. I think Red Jice is very good. I'm going to say it's the best ice type in OU. As for worst ice type, I think I might have an idea of who I want to pick. Sneasel's quite bad, but it's UU ranked. It's got attack. It's got a move pool. High speed too. Can't be the worst. There's worse. Dugong I discussed earlier in the water type section. It's got merit. Glalie, I mean, that's just a snowball that is going to the moon. This is an excellent Pokemon. Don't talk ill of Glalie in any of my comments, please. Pillar Swine can't be the worst ice ground that's a decent typing i won with it on jimothy gaming I, you can win with you know anything in the world caterpie can win if, if you try hard enough but still pillar swine actually managed to wall a bolt beam jirachi that was something it's got ice freeze immunity it's a ground type that's neutral to ice that's something it's got decent stats it can't there's got to be worse celio i think we found our culprit folks delhi bird has got to be it delhi bird is horrendous and of course we know that later on delhi bird becomes the best pokemon ever built in gen 9 with the release of iron bundle for now though it's got to be delhi bird this guy has no stats whatsoever i mean geez i i tend to forget how bad delhi bird is what's its max speed less than recorded negative numbers can go it's got Focus Punch. That's a move. It's got... Does it have Rapid Spin? It does. It's got like a pretty nice move pull, but it simply has doesn't have the stats to achieve much. What is it? ZU? Would you even use this in ZU, folks? Maybe as a Rapid Spinner? For lack of much better? But I feel like even Star U is preferable to Deli Bird in that department. I think I would rather Star U. It's got Natural Cure. Deli Bird is outclassed by a little version of Starmie, folks. That is Dire Straits. Deli Bird's gotta be... That's a bad bird. Best fighting type in Gen 3 OU. This one's contentious. It's between these three fellows, for sure. Hariyama, Breloom, and Heracross. That you can make a case for all of them, I think. But I would probably say Heracross. Breloom, I discussed this in my recent viability rankings video. But Breloom teams feel inconsistent to me compared to the other two fighters. Breloom has advantages, but it suffers from four move slot syndrome and being poor in the mid game. It's like all in on short term, which can feel flimsy to me. Hariyama, you can make a case. It's got excellent bulk, access to knockoff, fits on very good defensive teams, which tend to be quite consistent and powerful and see a lot of success in high level. But I got to go with Heracross, folks. I think this is the premier wall breaker of Gen 3 OU with its enormous attack stat guts and stab Megahorn, which can tear apart defensive teams. Focus Punch, also incredible breaking power. Decent amount of moveset variety too. You can run these sub select sets on uh weather clear teams which this is perhaps the scariest sweeper in gen 3 ou if you can build the team around it and it's one of the best reasons to use weather clear strategies is to use this heracross because it's that powerful it can bail you out so often uh swarm and guts that's a decent decision to be made. I mean, Guts is excellent. It provides burn security, but Swarm with Megahorn gives you such breaking power. It's almost absurd. It also has a huge amount of moveset variety. Earthquake is an option you see sometimes. HP Ghost, I think you can even run 
health on this and go bulky Heracross to stomach hits from stuff like Swampert Hydro Pump and Suicunes and stuff like that. And there's like sub punch sets, sub swarm, three attacks, this kind of thing, no swords dance. You can go brick break instead of focus punch to more, be more directly threatening than rely on focus punch for read. You can do a lot with Heracross. There's also Jolly, which can hit the important speed benchmark of outrunning the 270 fellows that the base 100s that creep a bit below. So you can hit like a slower Zapdos or Salamence. You can also outrun Moltres with that. Heracross is excellent. I think it's fantastic. Now, who's the worst fighting type? It's definitely Blaziken. Just kidding. Some would tell you that though. Some would say it's Blaziken. Don't listen to people like that. I mean, honestly, even Polyrath has its merits. It has its day. It's good water absorb, damp, both good abilities. Good move pool to hypnosis and every special attack of all time almost primate is pretty bad but it has vital spirit that's an ability it's got decent enough attack and speed you can probably do something with primate hit on top has intimidate and rapid spin and good stats machoke is not even a vol what have we got in the in terms of low tier ones uh, zu we've got a combuskin and meditite at the lower ranks i think the worst fighting type is going to be something that's half decent to be honest because i don't want to count the not fully evolved guys because that doesn't feel fair to me like if i put meditite like of course it's just a baby. Machop, Makuhita. You can't have me put Mankey as the worst fighting type. Mankey has not been fairly evaluated. I think that would be a disservice to Mankey, personally. Well, I might have to go with Hitmonchan then. Hitmonchan, I think, is outclassed by many of its contemporaries. If you th if you think about it, all the other Hitmons are superior. Hitmon Lee is higher rank. Hitmon Top has Rapid Spin Intimidate, which is a more logical way to go. Hitmonchan, as a Rapid Spinner, is outclassed. It's got Mark, Mark Punch. I don't know if Special Defense Leaning is a good fit on a fighting type. Hitmon Top does have, is Hitmon Top have special defense? But it does have, I mean, why on earth would you not use Hitmon Top over Hitmon Chan? The difference with Intimidate is significant. Intimidate is so much better. It's a fantastic ability. That alone is a big, big one. Hitmon Chan, I think. But this is a good Pokemon in NU even, even then. So the fighting types aren't even that bad, even at the worst of times. There's no equivalent of a Spinder for a fighting type. They didn't just make a joke fighting type Pokemon. They're all respectable. You gotta respect these fighting types. They're not terrible. But if I had to choose, I guess Hitmonchan would be it, folks. I think it would be Hitmonchan. Ghost type? It's not even close. It is Gengar automatically. The next best is Dusclops or perhaps Misdreavus, who there's not even close. There's a significant rift. It's not even in the conversation. Gengar is outstanding, of course. Excellent offensive stats. Fantastic ghost poison levitate defensive combination with myriad immunities. It has coverage for days. It has Will-O-Wisp, one of the best status inflicting moves. It has explosion. It has focus punch hypnosis. It has destiny bond. It has everything you could ever ask for. It is the most intricate and vastly customizable Pokemon there is in Gen 3 OU. And who's the worst ghost? Banette? You can't say it's Banette. Banette has high attack, one of the few physical attacking ghost tanks that can work in that role. It's actually a really cool spin blocker on hyper offense that I think is perhaps the most underrated Pokemon in Gen 3. A hot take from Jim. Haunter doesn't count, but even Haunter is not terrible. Sableye? That's got merit. It's got knockoff, recover. ABR famously won with it in important set against M Dragon. Uh, Duskull doesn't count. Oh, this is easy. It's Shedinja. Shedinja is by far the worst, folks. It has one health. I mean, this is a world where sand exists on the field almost at all times, which instantly KOs you. There's no safety goggles for protection. There's no heavy-duty boots to prevent you from falling to spikes, the second most central idea on Earth. And then, even if you do make miracles happen, a lot of the most common offensive Pokemon in the game can just defeat you in a single fell swoop. And you don't even have that much to show for it if you can exist, because you don't have Will-O-Wisp. You've got Toxic as your best move. You got like Swords Dance BP maybe in a miracle situation. Shedinja does have a niche in Ubers, but I even think it's overrated there because spikes are everywhere and Pursuit is everywhere to, to hit Deoxys attack. So Shedinja gets Pursuited very easily. I did of course make a video. It's my most viewed video about how Shedinja made miracles happen in Callus Invitational. That is the most fringe of fringe situations you will ever see. I hope that nobody uses Shedinja because of that video. You will be very disappointed. You are not going to have much fun. Shedinja does have the niche of being the best spike sack in the game because there's only one health, so a single spike and you can already sack Shedinja. If that's your best niche is that you die as faster than anything else in the world, I don't know, folks. Even then, you're not even as good as Haunter. I would rather use Haunter, to be honest, than Shedinja for that purpose. That would probably be more valuable to me. Shedinja's at the very bottom of the ghost rabbit hole. We now move on to ground types, and since Swampert 
already has its slot claimed in the water type category. I won't put it on again. So we've got some competition then between Claydol, Dugtrio, and Flygon. You could make a case for each of these. Flygon is a very good alternative rock resist to Swampert with its own merits. Dragon typing provides unique resistances. You're not vulnerable to grass attacks. You're neutral to them. You have Levitate, which is one of the best abilities you can get. You are ground immune and spike immune. Flygon is a staple of Superman teams. It's good on Magneton teams too. But Flygon's usage and where it can fit is a bit more limited than these other two. Despite its advantages, I would not put it as the number one. It's between Dugtrio and Claydol then, and this is a tough one, folks. Dugtrio is a defining Pokemon of Gen 3 OU. It has a impact that ripples throughout everything because being Dugtrio weak is a mark of death in this format. Uh, Dugtrio enables special offense strategies as it can trap and defeat Blissey. It is also a staple of various defensive teams as an alternative way to defeat Tyranitar, not requiring swamp it as much. It supports a lot because there's a lot of things Dugtrio can eliminate. The ability to just threaten and always scare Pokemon like Jirachi, Metagross, Tyranitar, and randomly defeat a bunch of fringe strategies that use something like Blaziken or Raikou. Dugtrio is so good. Claydol, however, Claydol is a yet another outstanding ground type that has risen significantly in popularity as the years have gone by. It is the most popular rapid spinner in the modern metagame because it is sand immune, spike immune, ground immune. It is incredibly bulky with its massive 120 and 105 defense stats. You have explosion. This is just an excellent defensive Pokemon. It eludes the spikes, can rapid spin and then trade with stuff. And it also can be like a half Tyranitar check. It kind of half checks everything because it threatens to explode on them and helps you versus like Zapdos, Jolteon, stuff like that. Claydol is always useful in every battle. So for that reason, I got to give it to Claydol as best ground type. Claydol is tremendous. It can also hold its own against Gengar, the most popular rapid spin blocker. And it's got good moveset variety in terms of Shadow Ball, Rock Slide, potentially. You can also do... Uh, uh, rest on bulkier sets or refresh. Uh, Claydol's epic and good and powerful. Worst ground type is going to be a more complex one. Ground tends to be one of the better types. Even the bad ground types have their have their day. Even like Golem down here, it's got you know explosion and a good move pool and good stats. I'm sure it's solid in UU. Nido King has good poison point ability and move pool. Same with the Nido Queen. Quagsire can be used in OU too. We're down in the depths of like NU ranked ground types are all not fully evolved. That says a lot. Except Whiskash. The worst ground type has got to be Pillar Swine. Whiskash is ranked above it and has a better type of course water ground probably better move pool too pillar swine i mean it's bad but even this as far as like worst pokemon of a type pillar swine is not that terrible compare it to spinder this can actually do stuff maybe it's got like decent stats a pretty good move pool it, i mean it's obviously bad ice ground isn't very good typing that's got to be it the worst ground type is pillar swine up next is steel and this is a great type that has multiple ou ranked pokemon and even powerful fringe lower tier pokemon that are good it's got to be between skarmory and metagross these are the two that are in the conversation as for the other ones i mean jirachi is very good obviously a staple but not quite on the level of these two magneton same deal foratris same deal so between Skarmory and Metagross, it's pretty close. I mean, these are the two contenders for like S tier fellows. I mean, Metagross is one of the best attackers in the format. Also one of the best defensive Pokemon simultaneously. It provides so much to teams. It's like a must have on offensive leaning strategies. It's the most powerful exploder. You can defeat Skarmory in a single hit with a choice band explosion. That's significant. Meteor Mash is insanely powerful with its attack raise chance. It's also so versatile. Look at all these set options. This doesn't even cover all of it. There's like Endorse Salak, Metagross. So much for it. That being said, you got to give best steel type in the game to Skarmory. This is the best defensive Pokemon in the entire format. Its typing is just truly unbelievable. Steel flying is so good. It has no physical weaknesses and it's immune to spikes, sand, ground, poison, everything you want. It's the best spike setter. It can chip heal a million because of its natural bulk. It's a simple and yet truly unbelievably powerful Pokemon that every team needs to respect in some capacity and have some plan to take it down or it will just sit there and be Skarmory and defeat you forever. And worse Steel-type might be a tough one because Steel-types tend to be pretty good. I think we have our answer immediately. 
We could talk about some of them. Agron is not as bad as it looks. You can use it in OU. It has Thunder Wave, Focus Punch, and it can. it's actually a Skarmory switch in because it's immune to Toxic. It resists Drill Pack and you can just get free Focus Punches for a million years. You can also Thunder Wave stuff. You can use it on Rock Spam team sometimes. Obviously tough to fit, but you can. You got like Steelix. All these are very good, these BLs. Scizor has a high attack. You can do Endure Reversal strategies or like Baton Pass stuff. Steelix can check. Zapdos Jolteon and has explosion, high defense. Registeel, very versatile guy. Unfortunately, it's got to be Mawile, who isn't even that bad. Mawile I've used before. It's got Steel Tapping Intimidates, Swords Dance, Baton Pass. I mean, that's all you had to say. That's decent. Obviously, its stats are horrendous, but it honestly makes up for the bad stats with its unique ability and movesets options. It even has like pretty nice stuff like Iron Defense Pass, Sub Pass, Focus Punch. Randomly has a really nice move pool with like Flamethrower Fire Blast. Respectable Pokemon, honestly. Even Taunt is pretty useful in Baton Pass strategies to deny Roar. That's actually quite nice. Counter? Yeah, Morwile's not even that bad, but it's the worst Steel type. That just goes to show how good the Steel type is. I suppose even a terrible one is usable in some capacity obviously not going to be excellent but compare it to spinder spinder is now the frame of reference for a, a crap pokemon this is miles above spinder it's not even close now here we are on the psychic type which is interesting because a lot of these already have slots on the list already celebi claimed the grass type cladal the ground type then we have jirachi and metagross probably as the choices for here but weirdly enough i feel like jirachi feels more like a psychic type to me than metagross i think of metagross as a steel type but i think of jirachi as a psychic type i don't know if that makes any sense psychic is more commonly used as a type on jirachi metagross does have the mixed set i don't think that's a valid enough reason to put jirachi over metagross who is definitely the superior pokemon metagross tremendous for the reasons i just stated in the steel type section incredibly versatile central and powerful best physical attacker plus one of the best defensive pokemon one of the best mixed attackers it's just excellent all around best explosion user by a significant margin now the worst psychic type in terms of moral standing has got to be mr mime mr mime is very immoral and like morally reprehensible and stuff like that but that's not what the list is about the list is about performance and competitive. Zatu could be a contender, but Zatu has like agility pass and thunder wave and stuff. It's got synchronized, that's an ability. And it has uh, baton pass. Chime Echo could be the one. Spoink. No, that's not full. It's got to be unknown, actually. Unknown is the one. It almost feels like it doesn't count. Obviously, unknown is no good. Let's go with unknown L. Uh, yeah, this is like a joke Pokemon that only gets hidden power. That's the whole joke of the guy. I guess there's your answer. It's it's a single stage. But if it wasn't unknown, if we'll say it's unknown. But if it wasn't, for whatever reason, if unknown was non-existent, it would have to be... Chimeco. But funnily enough, Chimeco is like number one ranked in NU. Chimeco is the best guy in NU. It's got Levitate, Psychic, and... Uh, it's a really good Calm Mind Sweeper. It also has, I believe, Heal Bell and or like Wish. Oh, it doesn't have Wish, sorry. It has Heal Bell though. Yeah, this is a top tier guy in NU. Look at it, very good move pool here with options such as Taunt. Psychic types tend to be decent in Gen 3 especially. Unknown almost doesn't count. Like if you look at Chimetko as the worst psychic type there is, it's not even that horrendous. Who is the best bug? Heracross already has a slot taken. Foratrus it is. Foratrus is the best bug in the game. Bug steel typing is great with only one weakness to fire. This is the most popular alternative spiker behind Skarmory and it is not just a Skarmory light. It has its own merit itself. It has access to rapid spin explosion and a pretty customizable fourth move slot here. Earthquake is a popular option to catch Magneton trying to come in and eliminate you. Hidden power bug for stab is also nice. I mean, you're using that bug typing for a competitive advantage. So this hits Stami and Claydol, who are the two most common rapid spinners. You can even go Zap Cannon. With only 50 accuracy, it's like not very reliable, but this can catch like Skarmories that try to stay in and loop you a lot. You can just hit them with a big paralysis. Same with Gengar can come in, try to defeat you. You can paralyze them, which is enormous and also chip them a bit. Counter is the other cool option here, allowing you to be more solid against Metagross. Counter HP Fire is also cool. Fortress is great, no doubt about it. And when it comes to worst bug type, trust me folks, we will not be hurting for options because the bug type is famously no good. I will say Shuckle is not not at the bottom. Shuckle I used on, it's got Encore on it, it's got high defenses. There's worse than Shuckle. Shedinja would take the slot if it wasn't already taken by ghost typing. You're lucky Shedinja today to not be slandered twice. Oh, I, I see some terrible ones already. We could be Drill is a contender. I think Illumires might be a contender. Ledian, that's a contender. It's not Ledian though. Ledian has agility pass and special defense stat. 
Ledian's better than some of these. Volbeat is quite horrendous. I believe Illumise has got like Encore and Moonlight and stuff. I think it's a good wall in ZU maybe. It's got value. Masquerade is Intimidate. That's a trait. That is a single trait. Beedrill's a contender, but I think I got to give it to Beautyfly. Beautyfly is outclassed by Butterfree. That should say everything you need to know. Same typing, but it's got a better... But why does this have Swarm with no bug type attack whatsoever? It's got Silver Wind, which is doing less than zero off the back of 70 base attack. Uh, it's got a higher special attack stat. It has like, I guess it's got a Giga Drain. I think Butterfree has the same. Butterfree has Compound Eyes, Sleep Powder. That's such so much better. This doesn't even have sleep powder. I thought this had sleep powder and I would still call it the worst, but it doesn't even have that. This has so little that it's almost uh, laughable. They really should have given this Pokemon like a something, anything. They sort of forgot, I think. They made it Butterfree. What if Butterfree had little to offer? What a concept. This is the worst bug. Best dark type, isn't it obvious folks? It's Tyranitar, the king of Gen 3 OU. Do I have to tell you why Tyranitar is good for the millionth time? It makes permanent sand, highest impact ability in the game. It's got every move pool option you could ever ask for scroll through this move pool you'll be done by next semester i'm not sure why semester came to mind as the unit of measurement there but regardless this is a pokemon that is central in more ways than just creating sandstorm it has its best dragon dance sweeper best physical threat it's got focus punch mixed pursuit everything on earth of course tyranitar is the best dark type now will you take a journey with me down the bottom to the dark types of hell i'm already seeing some contenders let me tell you sharpedo not the worst. It's got rough skin, high attack, mixed attacker, good move pull too, stab crunch, stab water, Absol, high attack stat, it has swords dance pass, that's that's real. Sneasel has some merit in UU tier. Shiftry, sunny day explosion, there you go. Not the worst. Shiftry is not the worst. Cactone's banned, but it's not even the worst in NU. So Cactone's got spikes, it's got needle arm, it's got good stats. Murkrow though, is the first contender. Murkrow is quite crap. I won with Murkrow on stream, but that was a miracle. I don't even know how the hell that happened. The guy just didn't attack me. That guy just taunted Murkrow for no reason and got shadow balled. That's not Murkrow's benefit. That's the, my opponent failing themselves, really. It's got insomnia. That is a trait. That is an advantage of some sort. However, not worth using this fellow for that, I would say. It's got no stats. They sort of forgot. Uh, Mighty Ena. Is Mighty Ena... Mighty Ena, I think, is actually worse than Murkrow. Yeah. I'm going to say Mighty Ena is worse. Murkrow is at least flying typing, which is good. And this has Intimidate, but it doesn't have the best typing for it. It's got... 90 attack is its best trait. It's not even fast. I actually think Murkrow is more threatening than this. It has Stab Drill Peck. More coverage, I think. There was the Xtina team that had triple dogs, including Myena. I think the only reason Myena was used there was because it is a dog Pokemon, which fits with the theme. If not for that, would you consider Myena? Probably not. I think even Murkrow replaced for Myena on that team would be superior. That's rough, folks. Myena looks more powerful than little birdie Murkrow, but I think it's worse. What has it even got? Body Slam, uh, I Sleep, Shadow Ball, it at least has that. Taunt? Who doesn't have Taunt in this day and age? Mighty Ena is the worst one. That's it. It's been decided. Poison type is next. And this one's rough, folks. As you can see, the only OU ranked Poison type is Gengar. Gengar's not even really a Poison type. You don't think of Gengar as a Poison type. It's a Ghost type. Poison is just there to, for, to provide toxic immunity. It's actually a detriment in many cases because it gives psychic types super effective damage against you it's nice to be poison immune though poison is just a terrible type in gen 3 OU because the meta centers around dug trio and earthquake is powerful it has little offensive value because skarmory and steel types are everywhere ground types too sludge bomb's decent but not the best attack ever because of how many things resist and are immune to it. It does provide fighting resistance, which is powerful, but yeah, rough one, folks, rough one. I think technically speaking, you got to give Venusaur the title. If Gengar doesn't count, fighting resistance is nice. Poison immunity is nice. Actually does use it in that respect. And it cancels it out because of grass poison. So this is the rare poison type that can actually hold its own against Doug Trio because you're neutral and you hit him with the big Giga Drain. Uh, Venusaur is a good Pokemon. It's a relatively fast, relatively bulky sleep user. And I like Venusaur the most as a sleep user. As part from Breloom. Breloom's the best, but if I were to use an alternative sleeper, Venusaur's faster than Breloom. It's got different advantages such as Stab, Giga Drain, and actual special 
special attack stat, a bit more bulk too. Overgrow also comes up quite a lot. You get ice beamed into range and you can get him with overgrow. It's really nice. And you can actually run physically leaning sets with sludge bomb. They're the far less common, but you have like sludge bomb, earthquake, swords down. You actually got a physical move pool and 82 is not the world's worst physical attack stat. So this can be a set sometimes. I like Venusaur quite a bit. I think it's a, another quite underrated Pokemon in Gen 3. Worst poison type will probably not be too difficult. We've got Muck immediately uh, standing out as a bad poison type. Not the worst though. It's got explosion, sub punch, curse and stuff. Probably decent in UU, thanks to its move pool and stats. Primarily, the poison typing, I will say, brings it down massively. If Muck was just a different type, imagine Muck as a water type, different world. Muck as a poison type, you're suffering. Uh, Vile Plume is worse than Vile Plume and Cool Fish. These, got, these have got merit. Now we're down in the Roselia Depths. Arbok is the first contender here. Arbok is quite bad, however. Intimidate, that's a move. Shed Skin is an advantage as well. Surviper has a pretty vast move pool too. Surviper, I used it as a Carmine receiver and I was actually kind of impressed with how effective it was. It's got Flamethrower, Giga Drain and stuff. And it has like pretty good offensive stats actually. Swalot, it's got HP and it's got Encore. It's got also Liquid Ooze. Those are traits that are advantageous. Now we go down into the poison type depths of ZU. That's crazy, but I think the worst poison type is going to be superior to the worst bug type, which is interesting. I think it's got to be Dust Dox. I think it's got to be Dust Dox. I would say Dust Dox is worse than Ariados because Ariados has Insomnia and like Baton Pass and stuff. Dust Dox, however, it's got Shield Dust, which is pretty good. I think this is used as a wall in ZU, which is more than can be said for Butterfly, but very bad stats. Not much to show for it either. Its best role is as a special wall, and it, this is a special wall. You're absolutely hurting for options, aren't you? I would give it to Dust Dox, the worst poison type title here. Rock type. Since Tyranitar is taken, I think that the option is obvious. It is Aerodactyl, best rock type. Aerodactyl is outstanding. It is like the choice scarfer of Gen 3 with its enormous speed stat, allowing it to outrun a lot of stuff. The vast majority of the metagame, in fact, it can even outrun a plus one dragon against Tyranitar, and very little is as threatening as a choice band Aerodactyl. Great momentum generator and late game cleaner. Worst rock type is an interesting question because rock types are quite good, in Gen 3, it's uh, one of the best offensive types and sand immunity is useful. It's got decent enough defensive qualities, like some rock types can operate solidly in the defensive category, but at the same time, there's a lot of crappy ones. Omastar is not the worst. Omastar has a swift swim and has a niche in OU. Lunatone, not the worst, as much as I slandered it in my last video. Has Carmine Pass, Levitate, good traits. Who's down below? Relicanth could be it. Makago. I got my eyes on you, Makago. I'm sorry to say it. Okay, we might even have worse down below. And you know what? I've found it. I've found my fellow. The worst guy is Nose Pass. Nose Pass is bad, folks. It actually is good in ZU, though. It's got like explosion and thunder wave and it can wall stuff with its big defense. But as far as beyond Z, I mean, ZU is ZU. It's like the worst tier there is. So this has got to be the worst one. It's got Magnet Pull. That's pretty humorous, honestly. You can don't even think it can trap Skarmory, however. It actually has Fire Punch. Don't ask me why, it's literally just a nose and it can somehow punch something. And people praise the logical consistency of Pokemon and tell me I'm stupid for playing fan modifications that have such traits as Desolate Land Sunflora. Explain Fire Punch Nose Pass to me, Game Freak Truthers. Add, how does this one add up? Explain it to me using logic and I will defeat you in a debate. Nose Pass is no good and we are moving on to the next one. Best Dragon Type. This one is automatic. It's Salamence. Flygon is also OU ranked, but I'm sorry, Salamence is far better. Salamence is one of the best offensive Pokemon there is in this generation. The famous mixed attacking set. I mean, this, these offensive stats are truly tremendous. Even its natural bulk is great with good typing for resistances, immunities, thanks to flying and intimidate, of course, to lower attack. Great balance of defensive and offensive traits. What a versatile Pokemon. Who's the worst dragon though? Altaria is not the worst. It's got natural cure, high special defense. Such options as, I believe, Heal Bell. Does it get Heal Bell? Am I wrong? Yes, it does. There's worse than Altaria. We can find worse. We can find worse. Dragonair doesn't count. Never mind. We cannot find worse. Okay. Vibrav. These guys don't count because they're not fully evolved. I guess if we you had to put a gun to my head, it would be Bagon for not being fully evolved. But that's not how my list works. We don't disrespect Pokemon that aren't fully evolved. So for that reason, I suppose it's Altaria, who is honestly solid. I guess this says a lot about the power of the dragon type because they tend to make them pretty good because it's like a magical, funny type. So Altaria is decent. Same typing as Salamence. Has some unique moveset options. You know what's funny is that Altaria has a niche in Ubers because it can wall physical Deoxys attack sets and pursue them and 
defeat them. If this is the worst there is for the dragon type, that says a lot, folks. And last but not least, certainly not least, is the flying type. Perhaps the best type in Gen 3 OU. As you can see, most of these are already taken. For the rock type category, we've got Aerodactyl taken. Fire type, Moltres, Salamence, Dragon type. They're all taken except for Gyarados and Charizard. Isn't that interesting? Flying is so good in Gen 3, primarily because of spike immunity and arena trap immunity. It's just such a desirable typing and it rises to the top massively. Look at how many are in OU. Now I'm going to add another caveat to this particular category and I'm going to say the best one is Gyarados. Even though I think Charizard might actually be a superior Pokemon to Gyarados, I'm going to give it to Gyarados because Gyarados uses its flying typing more. It feels more like a flying type to me. It uses Hidden Power Flying as its main stab option and it is also a great answer to fighting types. It uses its flying typing for that fighting resistance very frequently. You could even make a case that Gyarados is better than Charizard. I think it's a very good Pokemon. It is a great alternative Dragon Dancer on physical offense teams besides Salamence. The advantages of it are its typing mainly, which Salamence, the problem with it is that it's time sorbic to ice. Gyarados, however, neutral to ice. So Gyarados can hold its own against Swampert and is a bit more effective against Blissey. Looks Blissey commonly carries Ice Beam. Gyarados helps you out versus Metagross too. Gyarados physical offense teams are some of my favorite that there is. I love the defensive value Gyarados provides. It really rounds out a team. And worst flying type is going to be an interesting question considering the overall high success rate of the flying type. Down in the depths we have such options as, I guess there are some pretty crappy ones down here. Yanma has compound eyes and hypnosis and also speed boost. Th those are decent traits. I think it can run reversal sets. There's worse. Beauty Fly would be, maybe, if it wasn't for the fact that it's taken in the bug type slot. Sorry, Beauty Fly. Or maybe, congratulations. Same with Deli Bird, already taken. Doduo doesn't count. We've got some options though. I think I think we probably have to go with Farfetch'd. Is Farfetch'd used in ZU? Is there a worse flying type? The stick item is a terrible signature item. It's compared to Thick Club and Light Ball and those other signature items, stick for crit chance. Uh, not that high impact, especially when you have no damn attack stat to begin with. What are you gonna do, crit some guy and deal as much damage as a Tauros or something would do normally? How exciting. This has like agility pass, that's interesting. However, you don't have any stats. Normal flying is a terrible combo too. Because one of the greatest advantages of flying typing is that you resist fighting. But normal cancels that out and provides no benefits on top of that. Being immune to ghost is not that useful in Gen 3. It's not that common of an attacking type. Yeah, it's basically just a straight downgrade to be normal flying versus just mono flying. So far-fetched, I think it's got a far-fetched dream for the future. Has proven itself to be the worst flying type of the game. Knockoff is an option, I will say. But... It simply doesn't have any stats. It's that simple. And that does it for my best and worst ranking of each type in Gen 3 OU. What did you think, folks? Do you agree or disagree? Do you take issue with anything I said in this video? If so, let me know down below. And thank you very much for watching.